one minute. Everybody excited? One minute. seconds oh i can hardly stand it myself here we go craft hole number nine kicks off right now hi happy thursday everybody uh killed it just in time for no music to be back there there's a little music uh welcome to a thursday edition of craft hole the last one for a little bit um uh, because we just run up against it we were trying to to balance out shows and um, getting a bunch of stuff done, but we can't. We can't balance it out. Uh, this last box set was so much work and it's still going on to complete all those orders. We've got to get out to the actual workshop, which is the whole point of buying this house. Um, we've got a 20-foot booth that has to be designed and laid out, put together before September, which gives me like six weeks to get it all done. Um, so there's just a ton of stuff. So we're going to put this on hold first. And then I'm going to say something, but wait for BK to confirm it. Uh, Boss Kitty Live will probably take four to six weeks uh, to completely just kind of shut down, get all this stuff, the final stuff done. We had to get moved into the house. We had to get all the electric put in. We had, We're still going to be working on it for a while after we get out there but uh we've got to get all this stuff done so we'll probably take off um the last week of summer and then come back uh right around mid-september just on the ramp up to off and the holidays and everything we'll be in a new studio new shows we're gonna uh we're look we've been doing this for four years and we're bored not with you and not with fiber crafting or crafting we're just we're doing the same goddamn show every week and it's time to scrub it into the new studio and do some new fun stuff who's here megan myers is here uh queen's crafts by bridget bridget how are you let me um let me kill a little music real quick and then fire up a little music no, that's not the one I wanted. Oh, uh, give me a second. Where am I? Where's my music? I want to get it up under me so I don't have to worry about it again. Let's start here. There we go. A little quiet music, because this is going to be a slow and low one today. Uh, where did I leave off with people? Uh, Bubbles is here. JK. Hi, JK. Earthy gal. Nice to see you. D Ginger Kid is up and around today. Vicky C, Yarn Pirate, you're always here. Yarn Pirate, I think you sleep upstairs um, over the over the chat. In our in the Mike Seaver over the chat. I don't know if anybody knows what I'm talking about. Emily Sen is here. Jet one will we be at off? Yeah, for sure. That's the whole thing. We're we got a we decided this year we've outgrown a ten foot booth, so we're taking up a half a um, the section off in blocks. Right, so you got walkthroughs, and uh, those blocks are ten by ten blocks. So sometimes you have four vendors in ten by ten booths. Sometimes you have three vendors, two in ten by tens, and then one taking up a twenty by ten on the whole other side of that block. That will be us this year, uh, and that's why we got so much stuff to work on. Jinxie doll, hi, Killingsworth at Ashton. Good to see you. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Yeah, all right. All these folks are here today on a Thursday, so hopefully you got all my info. But um, BK will tell you what's happening with Boss Kitty Live as far as a, a hiatus into the new studio. She'll talk to you all about that. 
uh, in the coming week, I'm sure, because she's going to want to get started on it. Uh, I didn't have time to do my makeup this morning for the show, so I got old man baggy shit going on under my eyes. Yeah, big booth. Uh, you know, it's fun. It's exciting to think about. But it's also a nightmare to try to design and lay out in a way that's uh, interesting and functional. We're going to double our inventory this year at the show, so there's going to be a ton of uh, of yarn, Boss Kitty yarn there. Plus, um, BK's mentioned this last couple of shows. I have a birthday coming up in August, and every year I like to do... I like to give a birthday gift to our uh, our Boss Kitty audience and, and uh, consumers. And this year, I'm going to give you the gift of a product release. We got a bunch of those this year, but I'm going to give you the, a gift of a uh, product release for my birthday. So we will launch it for patrons on August 1st. Or whatever the show is. Yeah, August 1st. We're going to launch it for patrons. We're not going to tell you what it is yet, but we will. Um, and the first 48 hours that we launch it, patrons will have 10% off. And then it will be a patron-exclusive product uh, for the first two weeks of August. And then right around my birthday, we're going to just release it to the store. And everyone will be very excited about it, I promise. Um, and then that'll probably be during uh, any hiatus that we take. And then when we come back, we'll have another product launch at on Black Friday. Um, and another product launch. We might have two product launches on Black Friday. That's why we're not doing a fall box set. Which is why we just did a double box set. So a lot of stuff going on in Boss Kitty Land. And we just want to kind of refresh things. We want to... Um, it's time to shake off just we started out just as a you know little craft streamer on twitch and uh we never kind of broke out of that mold as far as what we do and how we do it but moving into this studio this big workshop space we'll be able to do boss kitty we'll be able to do die streams she'll be able to do weaving streams um uh spinning streams using big uh treadle wheels um, all sorts of stuff. I will be able to pull out a scroll saw and work on stuff or a foam cutter. Right now we're in a little teeny tiny bedroom. Uh, I know the illusion of Hollywood is behind me, but we're in a teeny tiny bedroom. So we've got everything stored right there in piles and we have to sift through piles. It's no fun trying to do these shows in this little temporary studio. So we're itching to get out there. Uh, will off be the same spot it was last year in Albany? Yes, uh, off was moved from the uh, fairgrounds in Canby to the Expo Center in Albany, and uh, I think it worked out better. I'm mean, just going to be honest with you. I thought we were going to lose a lot of uh, uh, foot traffic because it's further away from Portland. It's like an hour further away from Portland. No, it was the biggest show we'd had in a long time, and I liked it. I liked the facility. I thought it was well organized. Um, I liked it better than the Canby Fairgrounds, and hopefully we'll stay there. But yes, this year it will be continuing to be in Albany. Um, I look beautiful. Thank you. You're so kind. Uh, Gracie lets me share when Zeus. <laughs> My wallet and yarn storage situation both thank you for not giving me a second double box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can't do it. We can't do it. We have three product releases this year and one of them is my birthday gift to you in august so stick around boss kitty live for more information about that uh ba -ba -ba, excited for die streams you're gonna love it because uh in this case we we can wheel the big workbench out that we'll be working on and wheel in um a, a lot of the die pots and stuff so you'll be able to to get an idea. Now, we won't give away our uh, proprietary information, so you won't see everything, but you'll be there for the process, and that'll be great. Uh, you're happy that it's further from Portland. That place is crazier than it used to be. It is. You know, it is. I, I've... Uh, there we go. I've um, defended my hometown of Portland, Oregon, for years to people who just you know, used to think it was just... You know, it's where um, lazy ne'er-do-wells lived. And it was. It was great. I loved it. Um, and then a couple years ago when there was all that violence 
and the protests and um, uh, the troops moved in and all that. That was really contained to a small little three block area, but the national news made it look like the city was burning, which it wasn't. The city was not burning. Trust me, we had gang violence in the early 90s. It was, this is nothing. Uh, but now it uh, really has gone to hell in a handbasket, so... Good thing is the real estate's cheap, so maybe I can find a nice place, fix it up. By the time it's done, we'll be the resurgent Detroit of the West Coast, and I can, you know, have a rental property. And I'll be kind. I'll be a good landlord. Uh, what are we going to do today? Well, let's find out. What are we doing today? We got this thing. Remember I carved out all those little rocks? Well, BK has gone with the tools and sculpted them all out along the edges and everything. And I must say, Boss Kitty, that is a superior job. You did one hell of a job. So I got to shave that down on the front. Uh, and then we will make a mold, a silicone mold of this. Uh, and I promise during hiatus, uh, BK is going to paint this and paint the little fairy door. And I'm going to resin mount uh, some large brad nails that we can tack this into the tree. But you get all that on the on Craftholegram. We'll keep Craftholegram up and running. So that's our Instagram, at Craftholegram. Uh, and then when we're done with this, uh, we'll just chill and do a little more of our paint by number where we number shifted all the colors by 10. So this is a very, very familiar painting. It's one that everybody knows. It's a very famous work of art, but we have color shifted it by 10. So we'll see how that works out too. Uh, Boise's gotten big and crazy and less fun to visit. I used to live in Boise. And uh, when I lived in Boise, late 90s, mid 90s, it was terrific. I loved the oh, early 90s, very early 90s, 90, 91, 92. I loved Boise. Boise reminds me, the Boise that I lived in in 90 reminds me of the Salem that I live in now. Um, Salem is very much that same size, also a capital city, also an interesting bit of, you know, restaurants and nightlife, but still small town. Boise has exploded. Boise is two and a half times the size it was. Uh, when I lived there. Boise also had a great music scene at the time, so. Uh, Sierra, hi, good to see you. Uh, thank you for that confirmation. Well, you know, it is what it is. All right, let's just start uh, cleaning this up. This guy right here, we'll clean this guy up. One of the things we need to clean up is as you're working with it and you're shaving bits of uh, clay off, they get on the table the little tiny bits, and then when you put this thing down and work on it again, they smoosh to the side, and then when they're wax, they uh, stick. So we're just going to take and clean those off and flatten this as much as possible, because this is going to be my resin pouring box. So I will waste some resin, but you know I got resin to, resin to waste. What is good is that the flat surface on the inside of this. As you can see, this kind of dips around the side. But this flat surface here is the same size as that. So this will sit flat here when I pour the resin uh, if I get all these little guys off. So let's do that. Flying to Seattle went off is going on. Might try to see if you can finagle a way to come see us. Yeah, please do, Kristen. It will be great to see you. Uh, anybody that wants to come down and see us at off, that is really our biggest show of the year. Let me zoom in on this a little bit so you get a, a better idea of what I'm working on. There we go. Uh, it's our biggest show of the year. It is the most fun, and I will tell you the last few years have been so much fun because absolute strangers will come up to us and go, Oh, I'm here because of you guys. I'm here to see you all. Uh, we... we um, we drove up from California to see Boss Kitty. We drove over from Bend to meet Boss Kitty. Uh, it's so much fun. You guys are great. And then we had some old friends from the stream fly across the country. Uh, and we're at off last year, and that was great. Got to meet some people that, in person that we'd only made friends with via the live streams for four years. 
loved it. We all went out to dinner. Uh, that was one of my favorite parts. We had a great, great time in an Italian restaurant in Albany. Love to do it again with some of the rest of you. Not all of you. Some of you are crazy. Some of you are just batshit crazy. Um, and it would be nice to see you and, and meet you and shake your hands. But, man, I don't know. It changed that much at the core, but it spread out so much. So many new subdivisions. Bubbles, uh, Jackson, Wyoming. Is that where you're from? Uh, I get, uh, we have, you know what? The next time, Bubbles, that we're in a, uh, we're in one of the Omnivoyer streams in Discord and you pop in, there are probably eight live cams in Jackson, Wyoming. We can check them out. JK flew from Mississippi and then drove. That's right. It was fun. I'm glad you brought the little one. We got to meet the little one. That was neat. This little tool for scraping. It just scrapes the surface. Let me get it centered. There we go. It just scrapes the surface. And... But look at that. Already much flatter. Laramie has changed, mostly positive. Uh, jealous of all the new restaurants. Laramie, Wyoming. I've been to Laramie, I've been to Rawlings. Uh, but you know what? I've never been uh, to Northern Wyoming. Just like that straight shot through. Through Wyoming. I tried to describe, I, I made a little cross country trek with some friends, you know, just one of those long three month road trips where you live off your wits. <laughs> get enough gas to go to the next town. And I got to see a lot of um, the U.S. And I tried to describe to BK uh, Waldrug, South Dakota. And she didn't understand. I had to go find a YouTuber that had been to Waldrug. And she saw Waldrug and still didn't understand what Waldrug was. So there are a lot of interesting spots in this country that Hard to explain to people unless you see them. National monuments, usually pretty disappointing. Uh, as problematic as um, Mount Rushmore is. Uh, it was stunning. I was really impressed with Mount Rushmore. That was a neat one. Grand Canyon's always nice. Uh, yeah, you do need to see Waldrug in person. You need to experience Waldrug for yourself. So I'm barely putting any pressure on this. I'm just kind of scraping with an even amount of pressure because there are bumps and ridges and I can smooth them out this way and get everything pretty level. If there's too much, you know, if it's wavy or if it's got bumps and stuff, when you set it flat, it... It's not even, so your silicone will pour in around the top of it. Sometimes it'll lift it up off the bottom. You don't want that. I didn't have any putty. I normally will have some putty, and I'll take a little ball of the sticky putty and put it there, and then squish it out flat, wow, super flat, and then it will stick to that plastic. And it won't shift, it won't move. Uh, White Horse, I did see the start of that. Um, I don't know if they've continued any work on it or not. I think work was suspended on it when I saw it. Crazy Horse, that's what it was. Um, and I thought that was fascinating. Again, you know, carving into mountainsides and things, uh, it's pretty spectacular. And we've, you know, as human beings have done this for centuries. Uh, but man, oh man, to see it in person, really, honestly, Mount Rushmore, because you don't realize how close you are to it. You think you're going to see it over a, a distance, but you're right there underneath it. It was really neat. Smooth. 
I mean, maybe it's not baby butt smooth, but it's getting there. Keep working on it. JK, your kiddo is two years old now. That's freaking me out. I'm sure it freaks you out from time to time. The touch, I know it doesn't look good, but to the touch, it's super smooth. Uh, one of the things I really liked about the Dakotas, I didn't get to take advantage of. I'm sure there were places where you could take advantage of, but you drive along the road, the main road, and you can see the Badlands, right? You just look out and it's beautiful. Beautiful. But um, don't go out there. <laughs> it's a protected protected monument area, and uh, you can't just wander out in it. I'm sure there are places where they have path walking or guided tours or things like that, but uh, we didn't get to go to any, so I didn't get to walk, into, walk out into the Badlands. I've been to Goblin Valley in Utah. That was really neat. I got real lucky. Took some risks. Got to see a lot of this country from... Uh, ground level, you know? to do a lot of neat things over that period of a few months wandering the country uh, woke up in an alleyway in on a Saturday morning in Key West Florida I had fallen asleep in the passenger seat and woke up in an alleyway surrounded by chickens that was my introduction to Key West we sandbagged for floods in Davenport, Iowa that year. We spent a day working with a Habitat for Humanity team building houses in uh, northern Florida after Hurricane Andrew. This was 92, 93, so it might have been Hurricane Andrew. Uh, spent the 4th of July in Nashville, Tennessee, because that's where we were when the 4th of July landed. Uh, man, that was fun and fascinating. We parked in a uh, parking lot down near the river. Um, and then after the fireworks and everything, we went back to our car. We were going to pull out and head out, you know, overnight road tripping. Our car was one of the few left in the lot by the time we got there, but we couldn't move it because we were facing a wall so we parked on kind of the outside edge we're facing a wall and behind us perpendicular to us was a another car which we weren't about to tell them to move because uh there was a woman in the back seat of that car giving birth so we just went to a bar for an hour or so until they finished up the birthing process and moved to the car thus freeing us from nashville all right, kids, I think that's pretty good. That's got all those little nubbies off. Let's come around to the front side and do some cleanup on the scraping. And then we're ready to, what'd you find? BK's in here just, you know, trying to get my attention. And I'm trying to give my attention to you because you all are far more important than BK. BK just wants you all to know that weaving is scary and she can't wait to try it on Saturday. She is terrified, not looking forward to it, but she is looking forward to spending time with our patrons for the Fleece to Finished project. Uh, volume what, six? Is this six? Yeah, this thing's been going on for quite some time. She got a virgin merino fleece last year, and so far we have cleaned it, processed it, washed it, dyed it, spun it, and now she's going to do a, uh, she's going to weave something with it. And this will be her first time weaving. Of all the fiber arts, this is the one she has not done. So if you're a patron, 
Uh, you'll enjoy watching BK Freak Out. Recommend the Painted Desert. Been to the Painted Desert for sure. Petrified Forest in Arizona. I lived in um, Winslow, so the Petrified Forest is just south of me. Uh, Camping on the Mississippi River. Right on. That'll be beautiful. Send me pictures. Uh, painted Desert. So going in... You leave California, you're heading to uh, Needles, which is a town. We have a in Oregon, and we have a town called Ontario, and Ontario is actually split down the middle. Half of Ontario is in Oregon. The other half is in Boise. Uh, for those who don't know, on the West Coast, there is a town called Needles, California, and uh, the other half of that town is Needles, Arizona. And I drove through Death Valley and the Painted Desert and all that. And it was 12.30 at night, and I was in Needles, Arizona. It's the dead of night, and it was 112 degrees. Uh, thank you. Petrified Forest is pretty amazing. Uh, you just, you're driving along, and then you look out on the side of the road, and there are big rocks and you realize those rocks look like broken up trees laying on their side and and you realize there's a bunch of them and it is a former bog forest i believe uh the water rescinded at some point in history and gave us the deserts of arizona but they left behind a bog of trees that have petrified over the centuries Uh, right at the entrance of the Petrified Forest is a gift shop. It's not related to the Petrified Forest, but it's, there's a lot of gift shops in Arizona. Uh, and in that gift shop, a lot of rocks, a lot of thunder eggs, a lot of things like that. But there is also a, pre a fossilized prehistoric alligator. So uh, I don't think you're going to see a lot of alligators in the desert of Arizona. This one was back in the day where there was a lot of water there. But it's in fully intact prehistoric fossilized alligator it's pretty neat disappointed by the petrified forest when you're in kindergarten really wanted it to look like a normal forest made of rock uh yeah i mean if i had heard just heard petrified forest that's what i would think it was for sure especially as a kid if you want uh, a direct route to the petrified forest you leave Winslow, Arizona, go 20 miles to the east to Holbrook, Arizona, where everything is dinosaurs. Um, then you get on the main road uh, down Holbrook off the highway. And once you cross Bucket of Blood Avenue, you are at the edge of town. You cross the railroad tracks and then just go straight a couple of miles here at the Petrified Forest. Missed the gift shop. They were closed. Glad to see the drive through of the actual place yeah it is um there's some neat stuff down there there's also living in winslow i lived on the edge of the navajo nation and uh it is the poorest place in in america uh poor and less available of um, services than ap many parts of Appalachia. Uh, one of the saddest parts is that the the, wa the government, you know, treated the land and then kept the water rights. So uh, water flows through in pipelines through big chunks of the Navajo Nation and right out the other side, and they are not allowed access to it. Some places, um, multi-generational living, and you'll have to drive 10, 12 miles to a well, to a public well, to get water, and then drive it back in buckets uh, back to your house. Sad. Not all of it is like that, but it is sad. I do remember while I was living in Winslow, I, I, uh, in the middle of the night, I came home after work and I turned on something in there and the movie Cars was on and I'd never seen the movie Cars and I'm watching Cars and I'm looking at the billboards and the, uh, the rocks 
uh, on the hillside and I take my curtain and I look out my window and I look back at the movie Cars and I look out my window and it is, um, I'm like, that. it's uncanny. There's no way they didn't just come here and use all of this. And then at the end of uh, the movie Cars, if you watch the credits, it says special thanks to the people of uh, Holbrook and Winslow, Arizona. So all, of, if you like cars, uh, I've lived there. There are people that live there. The Winslow Bulldogs. I lived across the street from the high school. The Winslow Bulldogs. Used to be a happening place. Uh, the main street of town is Route 66. Uh, and then in the 50s with the... Uh, 50s and 60s with the uh, U.S. Highway plan. They built a highway further north in town and uh, Highway 66 lost its appeal and people left Winslow. People didn't even exit. People didn't even take the exit off the freeway. It used to be if you were headed east out of California, you had to go through Winslow. Now you, you can bypass Winslow. Supreme Court upheld that disgusting water decision. I saw that the other day. Or it was a couple of, uh, a few weeks ago, yeah. Um, if you're looking for the painted forest, you'll be led to a place in the middle of nowhere with some tagged building, painted buildings. Be careful you Google the right thing. Uh, anybody ever seen the Jeff Bridges movie Starman? It's from the 80s with Karen Allen from uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. There's this fun little science fiction movie, but in the end he has to go back to this giant meteor impact crater to find his people and go back into space and that meteor impact crater one of the largest in north america if not the largest impact crater in north america is just outside of winslow arizona on your way to flagstaff pretty neat pretty neat you got to go through a gift store, and as you're going through the gift store, you make your way out back to the back patio, they open the door, and you walk out, and then you are looking down at a giant hole in the ground. Pretty cool. Starman, How I Disappear, yeah. Starman. I'm not talking about the silly television series. Um, here we go. Okay, I've cleaned up kind of the dusty little bits that were in between. Um, oh. There's little bits here on the front. What I don't want is stuff shifting around or causing things to not look right in the cast. So we want to clean the, the little edge bits up. I still want to keep some of the tool marks, though, because the tool marks are raw looking, you know? And if you're putting concrete in between stones, it doesn't always look super smooth. Uh, so I like the tool marks. I just want to get out the little flakes that have wormed their way in okay now you see this ridge this front ridge the door is going to sit in there do i have the door i don't have it on me but the door is going to sit in there but you don't want that ridge in front of the door so now i got to take that ridge off let's see what's the best i'm going to go back to using this no you know what i'm going to use a plastic tool that i have because it's got a a sword like edge to it and I'm going to use that for my initial cut. And then I'll level it off with this tool. Dig too deep, which I already have. I'll, I'll fix that, though. Oh, maybe I didn't. Maybe I dug just right. I need the other tool. This looks pretty smooth right here. If I can just keep scraping to get it level, I think I'm good. Yeah. That's terrific. Clean it up a little bit more. Let's 
Let's take some of that rough edge off. There's an abrupt front edge there. I'm shaving it level. I want to round that off. It's a smoothing tool. This one. Smoothing tool. I love using the silicone tools uh, over the wooden ones, especially when the clay is warm because they, you know, they're smooshy. And so they act like a fingertip, like a firm fingertip. Uh, JK, you went to the Meteor Crater? Did you enjoy it? Did you have a good time? I mean, that it, it's a it's a fascinating, fascinating thing. You know, there's not many of those in the world that you can step out and especially that large, where you can step out and really have a good look at it. A little bit of an edge to this rock here, just so it. Doesn't seem like I got anything too perfect there. Um, so if you weren't here when I started this little stoop, this little patio area, this is what the underside of the the uh, fairy door looks like. And I squished it down in there because you see all these ridges. When I go to epoxy these two pieces together, the door and the stoop, these little ridges in here, because they match up, will uh, do a really good job of clinging to the epoxy and, and giving a lot of surface area to hold. Uh, so it should hold much more sturdy. All right, let's get... Are you sons of guns talking politics in my chat? Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. Stop it. Okay, got everything on all that shaved. Let's pull back a little bit. There we go. Now, I could just sit here and pick. And BK said the same thing. Once she starts on this, she could just do it for days because it, it, it does something to her ADD and allows her to have a manic focus. So uh, I could do that. I could clean this up all day, but I think I got it. I think I got it. So I'm going to set it in there. And if I just do this, even if I grip this and shift, it seems like there's a lot of surface area there. So I've got that. We're going to set it aside. Now let's mix up some um, silicone. Oh, shoot. Uh, hang on, guys. I may have n neglected to grab my cup off the counter. Let me... Let me, uh, let me call BK. It's in the other room. She's about 30 feet away from me. Hey, I forgot to bring a uh, cup for my silicone. Can you grab one of the uh, clear plastic cups out of the garage or one of the solo cups out of the uh, cabinet? Thank you, darling. Okay. Uh, let's see. I was hoping the clear cups. That is going to have to do. I was hoping the clear cups. No. Got these as a backup, but I want a clear cup so I can make sure that the silicone I'm mixing at the bottom is, is properly mixed. I'll use it if I have to, but she's going to go try to find me a clear cup oh terrific there we go there there's a clear cup I'm sure I've got something around here to stir that with Do I have uh, anything down there I can stir this with? I just completely, 
I got everything together except for those little pieces, so um ordered some silicone. Let's do an unboxing. There it is. Same stuff we got last time. I really liked it. I really liked it. It, um... There we go. So I'm going to use this. But when it's done, it's silicone, honey. So you know what happens when it's done? When it dries, you go like this and it peels off. It does not need to be sanded. But if you do want to take a T-pin, there are little white flecks in it. And take out those white flecks. Uh, BK is going to go prime the fairy door so she can get started painting it. Uh, I think you're fine. Yeah, I think you're fine. What is this? Oh, these must be gloves for mixing s silly gloves. Safety first, by the way, everybody. No, I, and they came with mixing sticks. I forgot all about them. So this is an A to B by volume silicone uh, epoxy. So I'm going to get two cups out. And we're going to pour the same volume in each cup. And then we're going to pour one into the other. Mix them up. And then we're going to go back to this. And pour our silicone mold. Set it aside. And move on to other things. All right. Oops. Cups down. Whoops, sorry, politics, you're damn right. Whoops, sorry. All right, so here's the deal. Um, I had this for years. I've been, uh, you know, BK will mention her D&D &D games, right? And uh, we even have uh, Blinky as part of that, you know, as part of the, our D&D &D lore on the Boss Kitty network. And we've always had viewers that are like, I've never played, or I played one time, and I don't know if I really get it. And, um, we get that from folks all the time. So I decided, hey, let's start some really fun, really old school, simple dungeon diving, Dungeons and Dragons games for beginners or relative newbies. So we are doing that. We've got a game coming up. Uh, this Sunday, we've got a character building, what we call Session Zero for a level one adventure for beginners. Um, we've set up a Discord, a separate Discord for these games. Um, if you are the least bit interested, so you have limited experience or no experience, and you're interested in playing Dungeons and Dragons, you don't have to buy anything, including dice. We've got it all set up and easy for you. We're gonna teach you how to be good D&D uh, &D players um, in the, not just the the uh, rules aspect but it creatively and how to work as a team at the table we have some experienced D, &D players that will be there as player coaches they'll join your team they'll work with you uh when you get done with it you're gonna have so much fun you're just gonna want to continue to play and you can continue to play with us or other people i have one slot we had a uh, back out at the last minute because of a family schedule issue so i've got one slot left for our first game which will be August 6th, I believe, Session Zero this Sunday. It'll be Sunday, August 6th. These games run about four to six hours. So if you're interested, DM me. Uh, we'll get you set up with everything. Um, if you're interested but can't play this time around, still DM me. We will put you in the Discord, and then we will be having, you know, uh, level one adventures, level three, level five, simple adventures. Uh, you can reuse characters, bring them back, re-team with other people later down the road. It will be fun. This is just for relative newcomers to teach them the game, to teach them how to be good players. Um, DM me. Or DM Rat or Left, Leftmost Cat, uh, because they are my assistants, my player coaches. And they will themselves hopefully be running some uh, one-shot games in the near future. Wanted to play with us so bad. The kids' party is Sunday, and then next Sunday might or not be might or not might not be your local game D and D our D and D game. I understand, but if you're still interested in playing, then by all means, let us know. We'll put you in the Discord, and then uh, we will announce when games are coming up. And if you can make it, come be part of it. Uh, but at least stay in the loop, you know. 
I gotta cut the. Oh, here it is, my craft knife. I've got this guy right here. Come on. That one didn't want to uh, work with me. All right, that one's there. Let's cut it out of this one. We got. So BK has. Whoops! Shit! I'm crushing things. BK has taken. Oh, it's stinky. Has taken the um, fairy door outside and put a spray primer on it. It dried real fast. So now she gets to paint it. Can I tell you the texture that I did on that front door is my best wood texture ever. And you would think I'd done it before, but I've never done it before. So this is great. This is, uh, so BK will get to painting this. Um, the details on the ends of those. Fab. Uh, you get to painting that and she'll get to painting the stoop and we get that all poured, so... How many crochets? Hello to you. So I will miss you while I'm gone, but those of you who want to who have signed up to play the beginner D&D &D games, I will see you while we're on hiatus. I will see some of you for the occasional Omnivoyer show on Sundays, because just or uh, whenever, because I get an itch to do those sometimes. And they're fun. We just get to hang out and watch cameras all over the world. Uh, we found a bar in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and it's got two or three cameras. Um, and I love it. Uh, we have all sorts of fun. All right, here we go. Five volume. Oh, itchy. I got something right on the, right here in the ridge of my nose. I'm not picking my nose, I promise you. Okay. All right, let's see. I'm going to need a considerable amount. Uh, normally, if I was going to do this, I would I would get some sand and I'd pour it in here to the depth that I think I'd need. I'd take this out, I'd pour that sand into a cup, and I'd know the volume of whatever liquid I'd need. And so I'd split that in half between these two cups with the uh, silicone and the activator. And then I'd have the right amount. But I'm just guessing because it's a craft hole, right? Let's say... I'm... Boy, oh boy. I don't know how I'm going to mix that. Let me find another container to mix this in. It's going to be larger than what I've got. I'm going to mix in this container. So we'll pour our volumes of the epoxy into these and then we'll pour them into this to mix because this is going to be there's no way I'll get the amount that I need in both of these or in one cup yeah I still might not have this right I still might not I might not have enough or I might have too much we'll see but you know what that's the way it goes Let's hold these up and see if we got it good. I think it's spot on. I think it's spot on. All right. No. Um, part B is the orange part. So this is the silicone and the activator. And here's the deal. If you don't get these right, if you get too much silicone and too little activator, it will still firm up. But it will be flexy and bendy. We have a little uh, saucer that does that. So I want to be sure. To be sure. Test it. Oh, spot on. Spot on, guys. All right, here we go. Let's pour. Let's 
four A in first. And we're going to the corner because that's going to make it easier to mix it all up. Got to let it all drain out. starts to stop starts to stop when it starts to uh, ease up scrape it out of there because there's a bunch in there okay there we go part A in the bucket now that I got that in let's Stir in part B and then we'll start mixing. Mixy, 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 mix. When you're done and it hardens and you get the mold out, uh, it does. It leaves in the mixing bucket, it leaves this silicone skin. We pulled this out of our laxed mixing bucket. It's just fun to play with. Just a little fidget toy. Thin air bubbles, but we want to make sure that we're scraping the sides and the corners and everything so that all the stuff gets mixed up. The activator gets mixed in with the silicone base, and you have a beautiful orange silicone epoxy. Ashton Stewart messaged me about D and D. Well, I will get back to Ashton Stewart uh, some point today. I appreciate you getting reaching out to me. Um, again, if you have limited experience, no experience, never thought about it. Um, if you're like, I don't know if that's my thing, try it out. Try it out. I played my first game in 1979. Somebody bought me a blue box, which was a basic beginner set for the brand new Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Um, and I instantly fell in love with it. And you'd think that things like that you would find silly as you get older. But if you're a creative person at all, if you like solving puzzles or uh, telling stories, especially, you know, if you're a storyteller of any kind, D&D &D is just kind of the best. Right? Okay, here we go. I can't lift this up and tilt it which I'd like to be able to do to get it started in the corner. So I'm just going to take and pour overhead. I'm sorry about this. I'm going to pour overhead into one corner and then let it make its way out from there. That will lower my chance of bubbles. It will lower my chance of uh, getting, you know, sloshing this thing around, moving it around, lifting it up off the base, which we don't want to do. Oh, if I got enough, I got just enough. Um, I see a little separation here. I want to make sure that it gets mixed. Okay, let me try to get as much of this out of here as I can. Every little extra bit helps make sure that you've got a solid mold. See, there's a lot more in there than you'd think. Okay, we can set that one out of the way. Our mold. 
Can't really see it, but I saw it. Let's see, I'm going to take a picture of it. Let's do this and this and this and this. I'm going to set this down. And I'm going to take a picture of the underside. And you can see... God, I hope I didn't screw that up just by moving it there. But you can see there's the flat surface of the... Uh, so we did a good job of making that flat. Um, hopefully we didn't just shift it in this. So this will be a nice open face when we flip that mold and get ready to pour in. Love it. Love it. Worked out perfect, right? Okay. I should have gotten myself an iced coffee. It's a little warm in here. Uh, Melanie, you started D&D &D so your daughter could learn. It is fun. It is fun to awaken the creativity in a child by um, teaching them to creatively problem solve. And then, on top of it, uh, teaching them a skill that so few people master, especially when they're young. And that is to give them a vocabulary to describe their creativity. So if you're creating something and you're making something up uh, and you're able to explain it and express it in a creative manner that is intriguing to people and they lock it, like that is a dynamic skill. And that is entirely what this game uh, does, is it teaches you the dynamic skill of uh, a, a creative vocabulary, expressing and explaining something uh, while you're doing it in order to solve a problem that you normally you probably would never have in the real world. I don't know how many uh, sewer drakes or rat hordes you have to fight um, in the catacombs below your town, but not many people do. Um, so D&D uh, &D serves a, an incredible purpose, especially for kids, but uh, older adults, you know, older adults who struggle um, to feel comfortable communicating in social settings or, you know, all sorts of things, or even people who get along just fine day to day, but feel like they'd like to kind of get out of a, a brain lock of creativity, then boy, oh boy, this game will kickstart it every time. All right, let me move this out of the way. Let me slide this guy over. all these tools and all of this silicone nonsense out of the way. And we'll get to the second part of why we're here today. Before we say goodbye for a few weeks, uh, and that is just getting back to our paint by made up numbers kit. Some say this is not a craft, but I say Au contraire, mon frère. Uh, this, if you're doing it the way we do it, it's crafty as shit. Because we took a standard paint-by-number kit of one of the world's most famous pieces of art. And we shifted all of the numbers by 10. So if you, um, if something said, nah, paint with number eight, you would be painting with, which is this bright, this dynamic brick red here. If, if one of these cells said eight, instead you would paint with 18, which is a, looks like a very, very dark purple. So that's what we're doing. We've shifted all of our, uh, all of our numbers, except for the first three, because the first three are, are kind of the core. So we kept those out of the 10 shift because they need more paint. And we just shifted one. So that's one, two, three now. We'll see how it comes out. This is going to be one of these projects we work on for two years. And then one day I just unroll it. And you guys see the most psychedelic, far out, bizarre piece of somewhat familiar art Okay, let's get some paintbrushes out.
Anybody having a good day? You having a chill day? If you're having a struggle, um, it's going to be all right. You know, uh, if you're if you're afraid of something that's that hasn't happened yet, because the uh, the outcome could be great or horrifying, it's going to be okay. Ultimately, that is my. Uh, that's how I see it, you know? Do some... Some that are this way. Do some that are... This size. I'm just going to take out a couple of brushes so that I have them here. So I don't have to keep dipping back in. Uh, let's wet this guy and see how... See if he responds, because he is very, very stiff... Oh, you know what? That's been clipped. That has a purpose. I'm not going to screw around with that brush. That brush has, a, has its own purpose. Let's try one of these. And... I'll find my towel before I go any further. One sec, guys. Oops. It's over there. One second. I just had to move a whole bunch of stuff just to get my towel. That's why I can't wait to move into the new studio because I got a whole wall and shelves and stuff to store things. I can just turn around and go, I need a drill Ooh, and grab a drill. Uh, Vicky C, work away. Toil, toil for the man. All right, let's see. I've got some, um, I've got some 15s. So let's try the 15. So 15 would be 25, except we only go to 22. So that would be one, two, three more, right? And since we're not using one, two, and three, we can loop back around to four. So one, two, three. So instead of 15, this robin's egg blue. That's not round. It's a little. It's a light blue, though. Uh, instead of that light blue, fifteen is now this yellow. That's how we're doing it, guys. So where things will get quiet a little bit because I don't really know what we need to chatter and lose my place. You work the IRS. Are you an administrative or are you a uh, field officer, field agent rather? We have a friend, a very dear friend. She is a, uh, she works for the government. If you ever applied for a government or military position and you have to have a thorough governmental background check done before they will give you security clearance, things like that. That's what she does. She drives around and she does background checks on people, which makes her both my sweetest and most terrifying friend. I love her to death. She's just a, a goofy sweetheart, but... Um, Jobs got me a little. Had some skeletons. They they rattle. Today has been a struggle. Migraines suck. Medications are not a great answer. They do suck. Migraines are terrible. Um, the science behind migraines is getting better every year. 
and it will not um, matter to you right now because it is just an awful thing but it, it will get better and then at some point they're going to come up with something maybe non-medication or maybe a brand new medication that will take care of it um, until then I can I can only commiserate fun thing to go through. I get them very, very rare. But they suck. People get them regularly. I just, I feel bad for you. You've had several back uh, of those background checks. You are a agent. Still. Uh, distilling is the one thing I haven't done. I have farmed and cultivated. I have made cheeses. I have made kombucha. Um, I've made beer. I've made sodas. Uh, but I've never distilled liquor. And uh, I think that I should. When Craft Hole returns in September, uh, we will be doing, um, hopefully, going to try to do themes, and we will be doing a, uh, for the, for a month, you know, whatever, however many shows we do in a month, whether it's four or whatever it is, they'll have a theme that month, and I believe September or October is prison month. Uh, so we'll be making toilet wine. We'll be turning an old cassette player into a tattoo gun. Um, all sorts of fun stuff. Thankfully, I don't get uh, any. Yeah. I don't know how a Bible medication works. Taking them, you know, they seem like uh, on steroids, but that's all they are anti inflammatory and uh, with a. Uh, a nerve-based pain reliever. Don't really know how they work. But as we are growing to become a less and less scientific culture and returning more to the dark ages of uh, believing ghost stories, then I uh, I don't see that I have a huge window to learn how medicine works. Sooner than later, we'll... version of doctor's visits in the United States will just be uh, a guy in a suit showing up in your front door and tapping your forehead to heal you. For all my 15s, where are you 15s? You, I, when I first glanced down, there were a ton of you. And now I don't see any of you. No, oh, there you go. Um, I took my father-in-law to lunch the other day. He drove down to Salem for a, a doctor's visit. And uh, I took him to lunch. And while we were downtown, we were accosted uh, more than once by some, some sort of youth group. 
uh, wanting us to reflect on why people were broken. My father-in-law, much more uh, patient and sweet than I am in the face of proselytizing. Uh, so I just let him do the talking. That is how the VA works. Uh, in my limited experience, my father, um, I've had to take him to appointments. He's had four knee surgeries and my father-in-law, he was just, this visit was a, a VA visit to a heart clinic. And yeah, it's uh, if, boy, oh boy. Yeah, you've got to point and go, this is broken. Please put this in a splint. And that's generally how VA hospitals work anymore. That's a sad thing to think about, but... Um, there's a fun movie. I don't know if it's all that great, but a fun movie called Article 99. Kiefer Sutherland. And I want to say Ray Liotta, but I don't remember. I don't know if it was Ray Liotta or who it was. Um, played doctors in a VA hospital. Um, and it was very much a modern mash, which is funny because it was Kiefer Sutherland instead of Donald Sutherland. Um, it was a movie. I don't know how well it did, uh, but I was entertained by it. Um, so if you want to see a, uh, that's a fun movie, Article 99, I'll recommend it. Come on, there's more 15s here they are. They have to be the tiniest ones. Uh, there are some spots on here that are super tiny. And it's going to take longer to paint this by numbers than it was to paint it. <laughs> because you're not making up the brush strokes. You have to paint tiny spots within the lines to get this thing to look right at the end. So... Took my dad to the VA for was hearing aids. Luckily, he had regular insurance. Yeah, you know, um, because I've got insurance, and it's pretty good. It's not great. It's pretty good. But uh, BK, her 9 to 5, is works for the state of Oregon. And let me tell you, state employees in Oregon... Uh, have done pretty well for themselves in terms of retirement and insurance. So I am, I've gone from a lifetime of no insurance because I worked in radio and television. And um, they tell you that SAG-AFTRA, SAG, the Screen Actors Guild, and the American Federation of Television and radio artists. I think that's it. That's AFTRA. I was a member of AFTRA for years. Uh, they didn't get a shit in terms of insurance. Um, they did after I left AFTRA, but. So I uh, had zero insurance. Now I'm mostly double covered. Um, 
BK had her knee surgery, major knee surgery, lost her meniscus and all that stuff. They had to do a lot of repairs and replacing and all that. And um, in the end, that knee surgery and its recovery, component recovery, cost us like $15. So, hooray unions. We're a union household. Uh, uh, federal employees, I'll bet, have great insurance benefits. Um, anybody that scoffs at unions and says unions hold back jobs, I'm here to tell you, yay, unions. I will say, though, in some cases, you know, unions get a little uh, power mad like anybody else, and some unions push a little too far and uh, end up corroding the balance. There is a balance to be struck. Uh, and it is an eternal battle to strike the balance between uh, worker and management. But there is a balance to be struck. Far too often you only end up with one side having to sacrifice for that balance. It's not really balance. What's military insurance like, JK? Uh, for those of you who don't know JK, uh, JK was a, um, a commissioned light tank in the uh, first Gulf War. I think that's right. Is that right? Telling you, if BK were in the military, she could be an entire artillery battle, uh, uh, or artillery battery. You just just um, piss her off and and stand down range and tell me how long it goes for you. She's funny. She's the funny lady. Uh, the state employees here in in Oregon just avoided a strike. Uh, and I thought it was a pretty good balance. They have a couple of uh, cost of living pay raises coming up in the next couple of years uh, that I think are pretty substantial, but they did have to give up a couple of other things that, you know, they piss and moan about. But honestly, there is a, uh, there is a balance. There's also a thing going on in Portland that, that I would love to see, and I'd love to see it in more cities. And if it's in your city, let me know. Uh, but Portland has a... Uh, a program that they started a couple of years ago where they trained officers to travel with uh, psychologists and mental health workers in a street team, the Portland City Street Response Team. And so when there are people in mental health crisis, instead of sending a bunch of cops out, they'll send this out first and, and kind of get that person calmed down and, and get them, you know, to where they need to be. And I think it's an incredible program. And in the intervening to, uh, two years when they, since they started it, they've frozen hiring, they've uh, frozen pay, uh, all sorts of things. And it is now on the docket. There are people who have signed a huge petition. It is now on the uh, Multnomah County, I think it is, docket to get the money to make that a 24-hour service because right now it's just a it's not a 24-hour service the street response team to get that to be a 24-hour service and to hire enough staff uh to keep it running and, and service the need in portland and boy oh boy if there was ever a thing that i was behind uh it would be that so hopefully but if there's one like that in your city a city response team uh, tell me about it.
Uh, cover all the things if you're active duty, but it isn't the best he best healthcare or doctors since the good ones make more on the outside and you move a lot and the doctor moves a lot too. That I can totally, yeah, I think it would be tough. Um, you know, unless you are uh, administrative at a base and so you're there for a longer period of time, I think it would be probably tough to have any kind of normality in who you saw uh, over t over a career in the military. That's, you know, that's something you don't think about. Having a regular doctor and a regular service care team is super important because these people get to know you. Uh, they know when you're absolutely hurting and why after after a while if you have chronic issues they also know when you're being a whiny little bitch uh i've had doctors you know just like okay well we've seen this before this is not going to be the end of you yeah that's what a regular doctor will do he'll he'll feel comfortable enough to, to say yeah i'm sure that feels bad right now but i don't think that we need to amputate your arm think California is statewide or um, uh, LA County LA County has a thing I think we talked about it last week maybe we didn't called um, micro Metro and it's basically a county run uber van that takes you from point a to point b that you know if it's not serviced by um the buses and trains and all that take you to point a from point a to point b you just you use your app and you say oh metro micro uh, or micro metro i need to be picked up and taken to my dentist's office at three o'clock and here comes a bus and it's a dollar um la county's got it right now as a pilot program I like the idea. I like when the city makes something work, especially one like Portland or San Francisco or LA where they are continuously derided um, nationally as being terrible cities where nothing works. Well, they're, you know, they're good cities where a lot of stuff is not working right now. All sorts of shit is cyclical, guys. That's just how life is. Try to get an apartment in Brooklyn now and then go back to 1977 and try to find an apartment building that wasn't smoldery rubble. Um, just things happen that way. But if you see something in your city that works or can work or or helps, celebrate it. Announce it. I bet the people in your city don't even know that it's there. You get behind the stuff that works, and the people in charge start to see that, um, oh, this is how we benefit. Oh, okay. And then they do it. You just kind of lead the way, hold their hands. Say, yeah, I know it's a tough decision, but does the state legislature break room really need the new Nespresso machine? Yavapai County, uh, Taros, which is 24-7 mental health mobile crisis unit. That's great. That's great. So many more of those programs we need. And uh, I will tell you, before it got hijacked and twisted and bent up, and before people who just generally oppose um, other people, the, I, the initial idea behind defund the police was not... Uh, oh, let's uh, fire all the police officers and take all their money away and leave them with nothing and then see what they can do. That was not the intent. The intent was to say, hey, 
let's take the money that they're spending on this um, mobile response unit tank. And instead of buying four of them, let's take and maybe buy one and then take the rest of that money and put together a mental health crisis first responders unit. That was the initial idea behind defund the police. And then some people heard that and went, oh, look at this bullshit. And then other people pushed back and then it became a more extreme type of thing. And it just was ridiculous. People work themselves into a little frenzy and then good shit, good, reasonable, right thinking shit doesn't get done. It's just how it is. I'm not talking politics. I'm talking communities. Notice I don't I don't mention anybody's party or anybody's affiliation or anybody that anybody that likes this person only thinks this I don't that's horseshit. I think about communities. I think that we all need to think about communities more. Um, you know, make our communities uh safe and I don't mean just from violence, but I mean from the fears of trying to live in a system like this. The system uh, has a lot of good things going for it and a lot of terrible fucking things going for it. And um, a lot of the good only exists because of the terrible and a lot of terrible only exists because of the good. And that's a tough one to think about. But uh, inevitably, if you want people to have the opportunity to fend for themselves being creative and like BK and I are trying to do, we're trying to make the yarn our only gig. Well, there's not a lot of places where you can get away with that. There are some other places in this world where you can, but we're in this one, and this country prides itself on that option. But then built into that option is greed. There are people who are greedy, will leverage that option, and they will tell you that you're a terrible person by telling them that you, that you shouldn't be allowed to be greedy. But the inverse of that is that you have people who don't work in that system, you know? And because that system doesn't work for them or they don't work in that system, they're inevitably going to be on the shallow end and the greedy folks are going to demonize them for it. But nine times out of ten, they're created by the system and not by any defect any anyway any defect that isn't mental health related we all know why we got out of the mental health business as a country would you make me yeah okay so i can't have coffee at the moment because i got a little heartburn going on but bk brought me a gift and i'm about to take a sip of something that's just crazy this is frothy milk, right? It's a steamer. It has fig leaf syrup in it. She made a fig leaf extract syrup, and she put a little bit in this frothy milk, warm milk. Let me try it. All right, ready? Brace yourselves. It's like candy. It's sweet and delicious. You would not, if you've ever seen a fig leaf, they're thick, they're leathery, they're fuzzy. Um... They're like an oak leaf that uh, just went nuts uh, in the gym. They do not look like they would taste good if you shoved one in your mouth. That they would have good texture, nothing. But she did this extract with sugar and turned it into a syrup and put this in my milk. And it's delightful. Cheers, BK. That is good. Thank you. Mmm. Yeah, I think if we talked less about who the people are that oppose us and talk more about the good ideas um, and just about good ideas, don't go, no, you're terrible. Just say, no, look, this is a good idea. Here's how this benefits. Um, if we just approach things that way, I think there'd be less demonization. Make people back up their sentiment. And if you think something's a good idea, be prepared to back it up. Why is that a good idea? Is it a good idea because your heart tells you so? Or is it a good idea because it benefits you and your family? 
Think about the fact that the system only exists because you're a community. It's not just you and your family. There's nothing in the Constitution that says, pull yourself up by your own bootstraps, you are the only thing. It says the individual enjoys freedom. It says that the individual enjoys the opportunity to pursue, not the right to succeed, but the opportunity to pursue what makes them happy provided and this is where the rule of law comes in it respects the fact that you're in a community if you can't respect the fact that you're in a community and there is a give and take and there are things that are going to limit you based on the idea that if it doesn't limit you you no longer have the community that gives you the right and the freedom if you forget all that then you you know that's where you turn a corner into being somebody that's not um, a positive in your community. I don't care who you vote for. I don't care, you know, what your pickup truck looks like and what bumper stickers you got on. I don't give a shit. Do you have good ideas? Are you benefiting your community for an overall benefit? Uh, are you understanding of the fact that all systems, by virtue of being community systems, have limitations based on the betterment of the community doesn't mean the individual betterment there are always going to be people who fall through the cracks it just is going to happen no matter what your system is but are you benefiting your community your individual right it's all well and good and i don't care if you can tell me and prove to me a thousand times over that words that are in the constitution but then not in the constitution say that you have an unlimited right to roll over the top of your community to pursue your happiness you don't you become a detriment and an enemy to your community when you do that so there you go um bk and i like nice things we don't have a lot of nice things but we do like when we can afford to to go on a vacation to the coast you know it might not be spending five grand to go to disneyland because we don't have it um, but once in a while, hey, let's go to a really nice dinner because we just had a good show. And I like to be able to do that. I like to be able to pay my bills on time. I like to be able to, to have that flexibility. does not mean that I am a benefit to my community if I become a millionaire uh, overnight and then corner the yarn market. Oh, I'm the only one that can sell to the and and I'm going to trademark and copyright and legal you out of business and um okay you got you got your rights but wield your rights as a acknowledgement of the favor that this community grants you or you can wield your rights as a weapon and if you wield your white rights as a weapon, uh, that's what the community is going to think of you. TK for president, bullshit. You've met my wife, I don't even run my own house. Okay, should I move on to another color? I'm not finding a lot more 15s. So I think I'm going to move on to another color. In the meantime, I'm going to cover over these numbers that are poking through. I have a light hand with the paint, apparently. I think I probably chased everybody off over the last few minutes, but that's all right. You guys get to hear me vent. I vent in a positive fashion, and I think that's what we should um, we should all think about. 
Uh, venting frustration is important. But if you're going to go on a rant, go on a positive rant. You know what I mean? Uh, don't tell me that this guy over here is an asshole because he's waving this flag and doing this thing and he's sh showing off this thing and he's uh, yelling and cheering for this guy or that guy. I don't, I don't give a shit about any of that. What has this guy done as a detriment or a positive to his community? That's that's where I'm going to measure you. I don't even care if you're, you're a, a grumpy prick that I don't want to hang out with. If you're doing something that's that's, uh, you know, a benefit. Your attitude is your attitude. <laughs> I don't give a shit. It doesn't do anything for me. Uh, making me want to start a paint by number. It is so soothing. Tina Hooper, good to see you. Hi. I'm glad you're here. Uh, there was this uh, young woman on TikTok the other day, in tears, just probably early 20s, maybe mid 20s, in tears, um, yelling and cursing out every um, women's rights activist of the last 40 years who worked hard to get women the vote, to edge the pay gap a little closer to give women uh, the opportunity to do things that they had otherwise been squeezed out of culturally. Uh, she cursed them all out because they forced her to have to get a job and now she's tired. Um, positive rants, kids. If you're going to go on a positive rant. All right, I think that is enough. I almost rinsed my paintbrush off in my milk. I think that's enough of the uh, 15 for now. Let's go on to another color. We got a little bit of time still, I think. Let me look. Oh, yeah, I got about 20 minutes or so. I'll pull another color in there for 20 minutes. And then we'll say goodbye for a few months. Unless you're playing in one of my D&D games on Discord. Exclamation mark Discord. If you're not there. Or... Um, you join me for one of the Omnivore streams coming up that we do just for fun. It's the old days when you could have civil discord even with those who didn't agree with you. And it never got personal. Um, yeah, I, I... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there were those days. I, um, I came into this world just a little prior to Nixon. So some of my earliest memories were the debates about Nixon. <clears throat> but, you know, if you look at your history books and you go back 150 years or more, um, you see some pretty ruthless politics. A lot of things where people are just not the nicest. You know what I mean? <laughs> Um, what was it? Robocalls in South Carolina. Um, it's my all-time favorite. Robocalls against John McCain during a primary that intimated that John McCain had an affair with a black woman and had a child out of wedlock. And uh, without saying so, it was just the most racist robocall I've ever seen. So... Yeah, things get nasty and dirty. That's why I'm saying, guys. Uh, rants about positive things or good ideas. Uh, not rants about uh, this jackass over here. Do you know who could give two shits about the latest Jason Aldean single? This guy. I just don't. I just... I don't care. He's going to whoop up some good old boys, and good old boys are getting whooped up for ever and ever and ever. Um, there's not a lot of them, I would tell you, are the least bit dangerous. All right, so finding another number. There's some 14s in here, so let's go with a 14. 14 times 10 is 24. That's 22 plus 4, 5. So 14 used to be, would have been this deep kind of burgundy wine color 
it will now be 22, 4, 6, be 5. It will be this pale yellow. So we're doing the yellows today, it looks like. Uh, Yarn Pirate's right. It does take curiosity. You have to um, want to know why you're wrong if you're wrong instead of instantly defending yourself as, oh no, I'm right. This person told me I'm right. These people that I agree with agree that I'm right. I'm right. It does require some curiosity to have a good exchange. Yeah. What um, political signs? I guess my whole life I've seen signs for local elections in people's yards. Um, buttons, <clears throat> buttons a lot. I see a lot of buttons. Um, yeah, and I. I think your guy's got the best idea. Let your your person has the best idea. That's fine. Throw it in there. The insulting and ridiculous signs as well. Kaiser. We lived across the street from a family compound, and I'm not bullshitting when I say family compound. Fenced, gated. Um, probably eight people that lived there regularly, so two families with children. And then people came and went all day long, and these folks had um, American flags and political flags flying from all their vehicles, uh, bumper stickers um, praising this person or that person, but mostly insulting uh, other people, because, you know, that's how children win arguments. Um, and it was frightening. It was frightening to live there. Uh, not because of anybody's specific political beliefs, but because uh, these people wanted you to know that they... Uh, this is what they believed in and that they were dangerous if you crossed them. And I'm not making that up. I, they, you don't have to come out and go, hey, if you don't believe this, I'm going to fuck you up. You can intentionally attempt to be intimidating. Um, in order to look like you have the upper hand in an argument. And I just... I never, I never got that. And I think anybody that goes that far and that wild uh, in 2023 probably uh, either doesn't understand what the real world is all about or they are fabulous narcissists who just only care about theirs. I don't know. I don't know where you want to on this today, guys. I'm sorry. I just, uh, Watching a lot of stuff, you know, watching a lot of stuff, and I, I try and find a different way to approach it, I'm trying to find a better way to be. What's the uh, what's the positive way to be about this? Is there anything positive about it? Can I find things? Um, I can learn a lot of things. Um, 
would really think it's just about uh, make your message positive make your debate positive yarn pirates right show some curiosity don't go into a debate with your fist raised go into a debate with your mind open because if you have a point or something that you believe in that you want to debate, you had to have learned about that. And uh, however you learned about it, you had to have a little bit of an open mind to let it sink in. Uh, otherwise, you're just parroting something and you're defending something you don't understand. And that's, um, ah, damn it, they used to have this great word. It's a Latin word. I'm trying to remember it uh, for people like that. Stupid. That's stupid. Compromise is not a bad word. Compromise is a terrific word. Compromise is what communities are based on. Communities aren't based on uh, dictatorial edicts. The only time that you should have a dictatorial edict is in a crisis situation where there are people who are trained and appointed to lead you through a crisis. Uh, at that point, that shit's not up for a vote. <laughs> and that's how it should be, right? Otherwise, there should just be conversations. This country should be a non-stop conversation. And it stopped being a conversation some time ago. Looking for fourteens here, some. In a sense. Reagan was able to do that. In another sense, a large part of the issue that we have with our current homeless population that we didn't have in the 60s and 70s, because we had federally funded state mental health facilities help some of these folks either therapeutically get them back into society or to uh in the case of um i've got two schizophrenics uh that i can name here in in salem they're like they're the guys that wander uh around and in that case they're they're taken care of they're not just left out in the street to cause crime or disruption or be tortured out in there we we used to have uh, a level of compassion uh, that was done away with. So, uh, yes, Reagan was able to get a lot of bipartisan uh, legislation through, which I thought was great. Uh, but at the same time, there's a lot of detrimental stuff that's very short-sighted that we're paying for now. Uh, and it may, you know, it's that way with everybody. So you can't really lionize too many folk, I will tell you that um, my favorite president that we've ever had, my favorite human being as president that we've ever had um, is Jimmy Carter, and he'll probably be uh, not long for this world. He's well into his 90s. Um, just a, a compassionate, thoughtful, intelligent human being with incredible, impeccable ethics impeccable this is the kind of person you want um as president unfortunately he came into office at the time of a horrible malaise in this country that affected a lot of things and between that and a theological revolution in another country where they ended up taking prisoners that were uh, americans 
uh, Carter just looks soft. Um, they, they tried everything they could to halt inflation without crippling uh, small business people and all that, and they couldn't really find a way to do that, so inflation rode really high. But a lot of that was on the tail of Watergate uh, and Ford. And, you know, we're, remember, we're only, at the time Carter was elected, we're only three years out of Watergate. So, reptilian. <laughs> compassion above all to the detriment of individual freedom and responsibility and another group wants individual and freedom and res uh, individual freedom for all without the specter of cultural societal responsibility uh, and that's where we are and Tough spot to be in, huh? And that just gets more and more entrenched every year. Still have faith that there are some smart, right thinking people in this country. I would uh, tell you all what I think the biggest poison to this society is, but I don't want to offend. A number of you and I don't want you to leave because I don't want you to think that I think that that's who the people are uh, as individuals because there's a lot of people involved in that particular poison whom I love and respect a great deal it's not just a poison in this country it's a poison around Someday, something will happen, and people will go, Oh, all right, I guess not. And uh, we'll take huge leaps forward. Jimmy Carter was too good a human to survive. He just did it goddamn right. Goddamn right. Uh, the bird people? Jimmy Carter was interviewed in Playboy magazine. There was a time when Playboy was really highly thought of as a um, desirable cultural magazine. Um, you know, take away the boobies. And there were um, works of fiction from some of the great writers of, of the 20th century. Uh, original works of fiction published first in Playboy. There were interviews with world leaders uh, and, and cultural icons. Jimmy Carter did a, uh, when he was elected, did an interview with Playboy. And they tried to pin him on a whole bunch of stuff, and his ethics were impeccable. And they asked him, um, have you ever cheated? Not just with your wife, but on anyone you've ever dated or had a relationship with. Have you ever cheated? And his, on his answer was so disarming that I don't think anyone ever doubted it. They're like, no, that's got to be true. That's got to be true. They asked him if he'd ever cheated, and he said, I have lusted in my heart. <laughs> like, I love you so much, Jimmy. I love you so much, man. Hi, Melanie. That's my personal opinion. That's just my personal opinion. Uh, some of your favorite sci-fi short stories originally published on Playboy. That's true. 
Yeah, some great ones. Uh, Vonnegut used to write play, uh, stuff for Playboy. Um, Joseph Heller wrote uh, stories for Playboy. Lots of people. Yeah, there was a period of time when it was a reputable magazine culturally, not just um, a, a booby rag. So does anyone here participate in a local buy nothing uh, because BK has for the last couple of years been participating in a local buy nothing group and it's sort of like a Facebook marketplace or Craigslist for people just to give stuff away um, and you can find really neat things we found stuff for the garden uh, this guy's like, oh, I got a whole bunch of bricks and river rock if you want to come by and pick it up. So you call them and uh, you set up a time and then you go pick up a bunch of bricks and river rock and you come out and you do some landscaping. Uh, when we're done here, while I'm out running errands, I have to go pick up a, a very nice, very expensive espresso machine that we got uh, for free today. It's in terrific condition. It comes with all, all sorts of stuff. It's just this person uh, decided they didn't care for espresso, I guess. A couple more 14s and we'll shut her down for the day and we'll be back in September. So it's going to be a long day. Uh, if I can find any more 14s while I'm here. Oh, here's a couple. Uh, Vicky C, you belong. Have you ever picked anything up? What's the neatest thing you got from your buy nothing group? By the way, we needed rugs to uh, go on the workshop floor out back for the new studio to absorb some sound reflection. So we just needed some dusty old rugs. And uh, BK went on into her buy nothing group. And this person said, uh, I've got a couple of rugs. Uh, they're really great. I don't have any room for them in my workshop, but they'll do exactly what you want. They were really nice rugs. They were perfect for what we wanted. Um, and that's how we met our neighbor across the street. That's how that happens. Again, that's about community. It's about, oh, I don't need to waste all this stuff, and I... Surely don't need to go to the hassle of trying to sell it to somebody. I don't need it. Someone else can need it in my community. I'm just going to put it up there and, and I'm going to find somebody that I like and I'm going to say, okay, I'll give it to you. Fifty-seven. That means it's time to stop. Time to end for the day so that I can go get some errands done and then I'm going to start my uh, six, eight weeks of non-stop getting a bunch of shit done. Uh, in the meantime, take a look at here. This is already setting up. Look at that. Oh my goodness. That is okay. So a little got in here after I shifted it, but we can just take a an exacto knife and trim all that. It's just going to be a little bit of flashing off. Uh, that won't affect anything. This mold is damn near done. Um, I know it's probably a twelve to twenty-four hour demold time, four to six. Okay, so in a couple of hours, this will be ready to demold. So you know what I'll do is I'll demold this. Uh, for Instagram. We'll do a little video and I'll throw it up on Craft Hole Graham. 
and uh we'll do that look at these bug bites and i just sit here and i do this and i just i look terrible i look like i've got some sort of horrible infection but no i have a garden and that's what i don't have those sleeves i gotta get those sleeves like uh, bk showed you guys last night those are great i loved them get some ed hardy sleeves so i can be that guy all right let's go here everybody i appreciate you um sitting through nine of these with me so we've done a month plus of these shows um and we will come back in the fall and do a bunch more before we get around to uh, off in fact i think we'll start back up in that studio about the time we're finishing up some st stuff for the um for off for the booth and i've got a big project that i'm going to be working on and because we'll be out in the studio i'll be able to show it to you so we'll have some fun there we're going to hook up a um a monitor a tv monitor screen and all sorts of stuff that will be playing boss kitty live in the booth on a loop so we get more people to come out and uh join you all in the fall uh it will be worth the work i believe it it'll be terrific uh to, 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 to give away a treadmill at the beginning of the pandemic someone took it out of the time out of their day to tell us we were terrible people it must be broken or we wouldn't give it away yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I was just talking about the mentally ill, wasn't? Browse my local buy nothing. Got some filing cabinets. Come to find out, they're from a haunted hotel. Mm -hmm. All right, kids. Boy, oh boy, did I have a good time. My house is clean and still lurking. Sierra, I'm glad you were here. Um, I will not be far away. Uh, we will be doing some omnivore shows in Discord, and again. If you want to play some D&D, &D, some fun, old-school D&D &D, uh, via Discord and your browser, and you've never played before, you've played a limited time, or you used to play years ago, but you haven't played in forever and ever, and I don't know if you remember how to play. If you have any of those, if you're any of those, uh, Rat and Leftmost Cat and I have set up a Discord server that will uh, be helping you guys have a lot of fun teaching you not just the rules of the game but uh, how to be good players socially interactively creatively how to solve puzzles things like that um it'll be a good time it's just some basic old school D D 101 if you're interested dm me on discord exclamation mark discord and chat to get to that link if you're not there everybody have a terrific day uh and i hope for the best for all of you because ultimately it absolutely will be Okay, I promise. Bye.